All right, so just before we head into the video, spoiler warning for the ending of Coromon. If you have not beat the game yet, add this to your watch later list. Definitely subscribe and then come back later. You guys got three seconds, okay? Three, two, one. I hope you're gone. Okay, so at the end of Coromon, you've vanquished the dark magic titan from Wubonia and the credits roll. You wake up in your room and then Regal tells you about wanting to go to space to perhaps save the Wubonian homeworld. And then he tells you in the lab that this will likely take a few years. Now, obviously, this is just an in-canon way of basically saying, hey guys, Coromon 2 is gonna be a space adventure, which I definitely think is really sick. I mean, I'd love to see more monster taming games in space, and I think Coromon could act as a great catalyst to sort of popularize that within the genre. In this video, I wanna talk about some speculation based on what we know, and sort of talk about what we could see with Coromon 2. Now, I don't have any massive insider leaks to show you guys, but I do have some speculation based on what we know, and based on some of the statements that the developers have said that make me think that there's a few ways that Coromon 2 could end up being executed and all of them are pretty cool. So with regards to gameplay, I'm not sure whether the game would take place partially on Earth and then maybe after the prologue you go to space or maybe have most of the game take place on Earth and then the Wubonian homeworld is the end game or maybe even have a game where we go to multiple planets on our way to Wubonia. There's a lot of possibilities here. If the game did take place solely on Wubonia though we would have a bit of an issue because there would only be able to be one type. If you don't remember at the end of Coromon when you're about to fight this dark magic titan it's a big deal that it's the only element on its planet whereas Earth has six different elements keeping it in order. So I don't think the entire game would take place on that home world unless something drastic happened to it, which added a bunch of different biomes and titans and stuff like that. If the game did take place primarily on Earth, they could have like a second region that you have to explore. And maybe there's like more people from Wubonia that have kind of taken refuge on Earth. And there's like settlements that no one even knows about. There could be like ship parts that you have to kind of find to eventually go to space. And then their planet could act as like the climax of the game. And then with regards to having multiple planets, there's a lot of really Really cool stuff they could do with that too. I think that this could sort of mirror the whole biome thing they got going on. So instead of, hey, here's a water biome, you go to a very aquatic planet. Maybe they can even use this to segue into new typings that never existed in the Vuela region, like a nature typing on a very jungle rich planet. I could also see some of the skill types become regular typings in this way as well, kind of like how the second generation of Pokemon added typings. Whereas in this time, it would just be adding defensive capabilities to already established skill types. In a Q&A on r slash JRPG, the developers had stated that if they were to make any of the types in Coromon that are not regular types, but instead skill types, regular types, poison would definitely be a priority. And I think all of them actually do have potential to become their own typings. Perhaps each planet could represent one of these skill types instead. Poison goes without saying you could have a very gaseous planet with toxic fumes. You could even retype Coromon like Beezle and Slitherpin, which are kind of odd because they're weak to poison type because they're normal type, but have venomous attributes. Same goes for air. You could have a very windy planet, you could have this encompass previous flying Coromon, magic could definitely become a new sort of type, kind of like fairy type in Pokemon. You might not need to retype any old Coromon for that, but you could have new designs dedicated to that. Fowl could emulate some sort of dark demonic type. I know we already have Ghost, but the devs did feel that Fowl was different enough from Ghost to give it its own typing, so maybe that could work. Now, Cut and Heavy type are a little on the interesting side though. Maybe Heavy could act like some sort of steel or metal emulating mech like Coromon, but Cut is a lot more of an attribute than a typing. I love Cut as an attacking type because it differentiates blunt force, like tackling someone and then literally slashing or gashing them. So maybe something like Scyther would be a cut type. I mean, it could also fit into air. There's no bug typing in Coromon. So maybe Coromon with like sharp appendages end up being cut type. But I also feel like that would end up incorporating every monster with claws or scythes or horns or whatever. So let me know your thoughts on the cut type and how that could work. Now, speaking of types, we could also end up seeing dual typing. I really hope we do actually. I think this would add a lot of versatility to certain Coromon as mentioned in my Coromon critique video, which you should definitely check out linked below. Now, I don't know if they're gonna use Titans again or have some type of different boss battle, but they've already established that Titans basically act as these beings that are sort of the protectors of the planets that they essentially forge. So if you were to have a game where you travel to various different planets, I could see the Titans on those planets materializing and seeing you as a threat, just like the Titans of Earth saw those invaders as threats. 
This is going to depend though, because one could argue that the Titans were able to sense the malicious intent from the Wubians, whereas said malice would not be present in this case, but we'll have to see. It could be really cool though, seeing all these Titans of different types than the ones we've seen. This also paves the path for a ton of possibilities when it comes to new Coromon designs. Really, when it comes to space, the possibilities are endless, allowing for much more abstract creatures than we could even imagine on Earth. And if they do incorporate the skill types, that's even more possibilities on top of that. Now for the development side of things, we got to talk about scope like time and stuff like that. So as you may know, Coromon took eight years to develop with it starting in 2014 and receiving tons of updates while the developers found their own style and created more iterations to the demo and stuff like that. Now, obviously that's a long time in between games. However, with Coromon 2, I would not expect it to take nearly that long. I'm a firm advocate for the idea that they should do what a lot of sequels do and reuse a lot of the assets like the Coromon sprites. They already look beautiful. I could see them keeping the same art style and just adding new areas with new tile sets for those and new Coromon, but keeping all the base systems and mechanics the same, but with add-ons. The thing is, we already have the core mechanics now. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. When you think about other games that have done this, like Crash Bandicoot or the Spyro series, you see that it really does work. Each game adds new mechanics, new features, etc. but the game's core is one and the same with the originals, and I'm totally cool with that. The reason Pokemon, for example, changes its art style every generation is to try to keep up with the newest graphics available on those current systems hardware, while Coromon is instead trying to emulate a past time, so there's no reason for them to try to redo all their sprites to make them fit on larger screens and stuff like that because they're specifically trying to make it look retro. I'd assume this would definitely reduce development time and we could end up seeing something like Nexamon Extinction and Nexamon 1 where the first Nexamon launched in 2017 while Extinction launched in 2020. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the devs should push out the game ASAP. I'm a firm believer as well in the idea that we should give developers time to develop their games. But what I'm saying is, I don't think Coromon 2 will take eight years just like the first one did because it has the foundation built. But yeah, guys, that was sort of my thoughts and just random ramblings about Coromon 2 and what exactly we know about it and what I think would be kind of cool. Obviously, we still have post-launch updates for the first game, and it's likely not going to be a while until we receive any additional information about it, but I think it's a lot of fun to speculate about these things early on and then sort of go back and see how close you landed to what actually ends up being true. So for those that would say this video is too early, bite me. I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Anyways, let me know in the comment section what you think we could see out of a Coromon sequel and stay tuned because I do want to do a top hopes for Coromon 2 in a more list styled format in the future. With all that said, if you are a monster taming fan or a fan of Coromon, definitely subscribe to the channel because I put out new videos every single day. You could also check me out on Twitter, Discord, Patreon, all links below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Dro Ghost, Jim Hamilton, Steelcase, and Dark Persona, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.